Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week we're going to take a deeper look at the users and groups features in Profile Manager and more specifically what you can include on profiles to manage your users or groups. Now in my previous screencast I did an overview of Profile Manager where I covered all of the different uh, elements here in the library and activity and all of these different screens uh, to give you kind of a good feel for Profile Manager. So if you haven't seen that screencast yet I'd recommend you go back and take a look at it uh, because I've done a series of screencasts in this Profile Manager series uh, that shows you how to enroll your devices and uh, walks you through the various screens. So here we are, uh, we've got our users and groups, and uh, in this case I'm just going to use uh, you know, one of our groups here to kind of take a look at the different uh, profile options. Again, it's the same between users and groups, so it doesn't matter which one we choose, but just uh, we'll just start with groups. So I'm going to go ahead and go here to Settings. And uh, this is our uh, settings for everyone profile here. Uh, now a question I get every once in a while is should we manage uh, by groups or by users? Now it's a lot easier to manage by uh, groups because you can make one set of changes here and everybody inside that group will have those changes take effect. Uh, but if you want to fine tune uh, particular users uh, that aren't in groups then you would go to users. So. Uh, it's kind of up to you on how to do it, uh, but the groups option is one of the more efficient ways to do it. So here's our settings for everyone profile, and these include all of the different things that we've started on uh, on our server uh, for profiles. So we've started all these different services. We got VPN, calendar, messages, contacts, uh, the OS 10 server accounts. All of those things have been configured inside the server application when we turn those uh, various options on. So what I'm going to do though, instead of downloading this profile, which I could do from here, uh, again, I'm in this in the web interface here for Profile Manager. I'm just going to click on Edit. And what this does is takes us into a page that allows us to set up what's called payloads to um, go through and uh, customize various aspects of our user's experience. Now, a couple of things you'll notice is over here we have OS 10 and iOS, so these are all settings that would affect both. We have iOS settings here, and these are settings that would affect iOS applications. So if they have an iPhone or something like that, these settings would inf influence that. And then we have OS 10, and these are settings I can set up for their Mac. And so once I make these settings for a user and they log into those machines, it will push those settings to those particular machines. So let's go ahead and just walk through some of these settings here to give you an idea what's in here. Again, this is just our general setting. Let's go to passcode. And if I just click on configure here, you can see that I can fine tune what they need to do with their passcode. Uh, I can say uh, how, how long it needs to be, the number of complex characters, uh, the passcode age to where it's going to reset again, uh, maximum uh, auto lock time. I've, I've got all of these things in here that I can set up to really uh, specifically fine tune how I want them to use passcodes. And you notice once I click it and make these changes, it says one payload configured, and that means that that will be uh, delivered to that device. Notice here it says not configured because those aren't set up. Let's go ahead and click on this one for mail. Again, in mail, I can go through and set up all of my mail account information including whether to allow mail drop or not. Uh, again, there your incoming and outgoing mail server, all of that stuff I can set up in here, and then click it, and it'll push it to all of their machines. Uh, same with Exchange. For those of you that are using Exchange, you can come in here and customize all the Exchange settings as well. Now here I've got uh, uh, you know the LDAP, right, which is the directory settings. If I've got a directory that I need to set up, I can set up the directory settings right inside here. And again, this is for Mac and iOS. I've got my contacts payload that's already set up and ready to go because I already configured it. The same with the calendars. Uh, that's because I did that in the server application. Uh, if you've got a network and you've got certain network configurations, you can come in here and set up the Wi-Fi information so that they will automatically have your network set up and ready to go. Once they uh, uh, load their computer and the payload gets pushed, they'll be able to join uh, your Wi-Fi network with all of your security protocols all in place. Again, here we got VPN that's already set up. Uh, you can do some work with certificates if you need to set up any particular certificates that you may have. Uh, this, uh, you know, these um, these 509 certificates and things like that. That would be a situation where uh, maybe you've got a business certificate that you want to set up uh, and, and put in here. Uh, the same with the, uh, S, uh, the SCEP. Uh, it's another uh, certificate that's used in business situations usually, uh, not so much for home users, but uh, you can go ahead and set those up in here as well. Now you can do web clips, which if you want to set up a particular web clip, maybe you want an icon uh, to show up on their screen, 
uh, with a direct link to a website. You can put in a label for that, the website's name, even an icon, and uh, have that show up on their devices. Those of you with fonts, if you have a font uh, set or packet you need to upload, you can configure those here. You just upload the particular font packet, and it will push it to those devices. Uh, so this is just, again, a quick tour. Here we've got AirPlay settings, and so if you've got any AirPlay devices, you can push this, and if you've got AirPlay destinations that are alive and ready to go, they'll show up here, and you can add them in. Uh, this comes in handy if you're in a business and you've got, uh, you know, maybe um, Apple TVs or something in conference rooms. You can have those set up in here, and if you've got a password, you can include the password so people can automatically get on. Uh, and again, security and privacy, and this is for OS 10, right? Whether we require users to use a password, uh, whether you allow them to override Gatekeeper or not. Uh, again, privacy settings, whether we could want to send data to Apple or not. So again, these are all general settings for OS 10 and iOS. So let's take a look at iOS now. Again, these are things that are uh, available to configure on your iOS device. Uh, for instance, restrictions. You can set up various restrictions to iOS here, including removing access to certain things like iCloud Keychain or your photo library. Uh, so this comes in very handy if you've got young kids and you don't want them, you want them to have access to certain things, but you don't want them to mess up what you've already got set up. So you can do that with functionality. You can do that with apps, so certain apps that are allowed or not allowed. Uh, and you can run in a uh, single app mode if you wanted to, if you had a supervised uh, iPad and you just want a one app on there, maybe for a kiosk or something like that, you could set this up so that only one app shows up. And then your media content ratings and uh, all of that, so more of these parental control type things. Uh, again, global HTTP uh, proxy, if you're running a proxy, you can set your proxy up here. If you don't know what a proxy is, then you probably don't, uh, don't need one or aren't using one, but if you do, this is where you would set that up. Uh, they've added a couple other things here. We've got a content filter uh, that's in here where we can basically filter by uh, different types of content, either to specific websites, a plugin if you've got one, or adult content. And then you can even just say these are the only permitted URLs, and these URLs here are blacklisted. I don't want my kids going to these sites, or I don't want my employees hitting anything but these sites. You can very much fine-tune their iOS device. Uh, domains here, you can set up uh, unmarked email domains, manage uh, Safari web domains, um, that sort of thing, uh, from which you know your documents are going to be uh, managed. You can set all that up in here. Again, this comes into play more if you're using you know devices that you're really supervising. We do have single sign-on in here, where you can have a an account name, a principal name, uh, the Realm renewal certificate. This comes in handy for especially for the new. Uh, classroom setup that's built into Profile Manager on here. Uh, I do have AirPrint settings, so you can set up your uh, the IP address and everything of your AirPrint printer. Uh, a new one that's been added is Google Accounts. So if you have any Google Accounts, you can set up your account information here for your email, and that will show up uh, and be pushed to your devices. So that is an addition. Uh, again, subscribe calendars. Again, if you've got different calendars you want them to subscribe to. I'm just going to kind of roll through these pretty quickly here. Uh, cellular, uh, you can set up their cellular uh, information if you needed to do that. You can just set up an APN for that uh, and have all of that set and ready to go. Uh, again, this is an addition, the OS X server accounts. I've already set this up through uh, the server application, but if you hadn't, you could uh, set it up in here. Um, we got the home screen layout, so you can even customize that. You can say what's in the dock on the iOS home screen and on page one, and you can add pages where you could just lay out uh, the actual applications and how you want them to show on the screen. So that's really nice. Uh, you've got your, and this would be nice if you've got multiple iOS devices and you want them to look the same. Uh, here we've got app configuration, and that's again if you're uploading an application, you can do that here. Uh, we've got net network usage rules. And so whether to allow cellular data or roaming or not uh, for certain things. And then you just click the plus here and put in your app identifier and whether you're going to allow that or not. Again, I, this comes a little bit more on those managed uh, devices. Uh, so again, for classrooms, this comes in handy. And then obviously notifications, uh, what notifications you want to have set up for your different applications. So that's the iOS settings. Let's take a look now at OS X. Uh, again, we've got the identification payload, same type of thing. Here's our restrictions that we can set up, and so you can restrict uh, what preferences a user can look at. And it even adds the third-party preference panes, which is really nice. 
uh, that that's added on there as well. Uh, you can, again, just restrict to whatever you want. Do the same thing with apps. You can say whether you want to allow Game Center or the App Store, uh, those sorts of things. You can say these apps are allowed, these folders are allowed, uh, but these are not allowed. These folders I don't want on there. Uh, same with widgets. You can add dashboard widgets. Uh, media, what types of media, whether they can even access their uh, DVD drive or not, if you've got a Mac with that on it. And then sharing, uh, again, what sharing features you want to show up uh, in the uh, share sheets on OS X. And then your functionality, whether you can allow the ca you're going to allow the camera, lock the desktop picture. This is one that a lot of people had asked for, especially when you got kids at school who keep changing the picture. You can lock it into one picture and you're all set and ready to go. Uh, again, messages has been configured. Uh, there's our uh, AD, Active Directory Certificate, and that would be if you're connecting to an Active Directory, you'd put that information in there. I can set the login items, again, to what apps I want, um, whether our network mounts that I want. So I had showed you how to automatically add a network mount when people uh, you know, logged into their computer. You can actually put the path to uh, shares that you have on your file sharing service that would actually automatically show up and mount. Uh, these are your authenticated mounts and your network mounts that would show up on your computer. So again, nice way to just configure those ahead of time and not have to worry about it. Uh, this is a mobility service. I'm going to cover this a little bit more for mobile accounts, so I'm going to skip over that. Uh, the dock, you can customize the dock. Again, how, how big the dock is, where, where it appears, what items are in the dock. Uh, again, lots of nice customization in here. Again, printing, same thing. I can set up my printer uh, information in here. Uh, parental controls, this comes in handy if you've got kids with devices. You can set all the parental controls like time limits and content filtering right here for your Mac. And then I can use the finder uh, here. I can set what type of finder, uh, what's shown on the desktop, and then different commands, what commands are available to users. Right? If I don't want them to shut down or restart a computer, I just uncheck these and they won't be able to do that. Uh, again, accessibility, these are all the accessibility features, vision, hearing, and interacting. I can set those up for my Mac. If you have any proxies, uh, you can set those up here as well for different um, you know, web access. You can put all that information in there. And then you have custom settings. If you had other settings that you wanted to configure, did a little bit of uh, code type things yourself, you could upload, upload files and have those custom settings there. So that gives you a real quick tour overview of all the different things that are available. Again, there are some settings that have been added in here to Profile Manager. Notice it says I've got 40 payloads. If I just say OK, it would configure all of those and push them to my devices. Obviously, I don't want to do that because I never configured anything. So I'm just going to say Cancel. And it's going to take us back to the main screen here. And everything's back to normal. So that gives you an idea of how to use the users and groups area and the different settings that you can set up. So hopefully that really uh, gives you an idea of what you can do with Profile Manager. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.